Hello guys and welcome back for a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King patch 2.02 version 8.3. Today we're gonna cast a classico matchup. Good against evil, elves against Isengard on the map Forts of Isen. Before losing any more time, let's get it started. And here we go. As on the left side of the map we have the Alvin player Tada. And his opponent on the right side is the Isengard player Talos. On the beautiful and most famous map of all Battle for Middle Earth games, Forts of Isen. Two furnaces are coming up for the Isengard player on the right side. And on the left side, we will have two Malon trees coming up for the Elven player Tada. And yeah, Elves against Isengard, I think it's a great matchup to watch. And yeah, I think it can go also either way. We know, I think Isengard is the faction with the strongest eco. Um, in the late game especially, you have so many ways to boost your resource income. With industry, with fuel the fires, with devastation, with the pillage ability from Lourdes level 8. So you have indeed in late game no worries about your resource income. And the Alvin faction on the other side is the most hated faction in Rise of the Witch King right now, as you know. Because I think Alvin faction is you know one of the most easiest factions to play and to master. And also a really heavy archer based faction that means, you know, Alvin player will be always looking for those all out fights. This is gonna favor the Alvin faction most of the time. But if Isengard player knows what he's doing and he is getting, you know, the most co cost efficient hero on the field who is definitely Lurtz and Saruman gets some levels on those kind of heroes, he can actually turn the game in his own favor. And yeah, I mean, the early game is the most important a part of the game in my opinion because then you can actually start snowballing and you can you know permanently put pressure on your opponent. Elven player Tada is gonna start with those pikeman units um, and will be creeping the work layer at the left side of the river. On the other side the Isengard player Talos is getting his Urukai on the field. If he actually can scout this area he can easily contest that but we know those pikemen they're gonna you know creep this work layer quite fast. And will be potentially even one-shotting those works. And that's been the case. He can still contest that by the way if he wants to. But he doesn't have the vision control he needs. That's the only part he's able to see. Now he's seeing. But I think it's just gonna be too late. He might still go for the parades though. And if he gets the last hit on this one. That would be huge. And he was, that was the case. And I can't guys tell you who was able to get the treasure. Because the colors are so similar to each other. Um, that I can't, uh, I didn't see, to be honest, so my bad. Alright, Warchan was used from Isengard's player, Rylinko was used from the Alvin player, Tata. He unfortunately lost the creep here to the Urukai. They are really close to his level 2 power spike. The reason why I keep saying power spike, nice to nice you asking, is because once they are level 2, they will be recovering over time. And it's really important on those, you know, um, expensive units like Urukai. Remember, they cost 400 each, and, you know, they are... The most expensive swordsman in the game, alongside with half troll swordsman and black Numenorians. Um The second unit are crossbowmen and pikemen. And um, it looks like you want to go for the creep here on the right side of the river. And the Alvin player is doing the same thing at the top left side of the map for Um The stable is up on the field. Uh, that means we're gonna get some Rivendell lancers first. Potentially even some of those Linden horse archer battalions later on. And they are a great counter, by the way, to, you know, you can still do the horse swing with them. With that being said, I think, you know, I mean, you can trample down the enemy units, no problem. But you can also take down the enemy calf super and duper easily. Um, and I'm talking about the Warc Riders, and they are gonna join the battlefield pretty soon as well from Talos. Beautiful. Uh, Tada and Talos, they were both able to, you know, secure a creep. Um, this was kind of 50-50 situation, so I think it's quite equal. If you take a look into the current power points, Talos has almost one power point collected. 400 command points available. And the Alvin player has actually uh, a bit more command points. I mean, power points, he has almost two power points collected. And also 400 command points available, just like for the Isengard player Talos. He's creeping the troll layer at the bottom left side. Was able to see those, you know, Urukai, and they will be... Getting taken down here by those Remandal Lancers. They are a bit tankier, obviously. So, you know, one trample is not gonna be enough. Especially not when they are using the old ground stands and 
the shield wall formation. It's gonna make them, as you know, quite tanky. At the same time, it looks like... Um, yeah, it looks like, I think it was the Alvin player, kinda, right? No. I don't know who was able to take down the creep, but we know the creep, the lair, will be secured by the Isengard player, Talos. Beautiful. The Warcriders were actually used to put some pressure. There was a lucky situation, and that's one of the most, um, you know, tricky parts about the Elven faction, guys. So, if you didn't know, Elven units, including the pikemen, they are getting stealthed. And they are around the trees, in the forest. And that can be really deadly for your calf units, in this case for the Vork Riders from Isengard faction. Because you don't see them, and you're gonna micro around, and you, are, you will be just running straight into the pikemen, and you might actually, you know, end up losing your entire battalion. That also counts for a hero like Sharku, who is also gonna take a lot of damage when trampling into the pikemen. And yes, the Linden Horse Archer battalions are on the field, and you can see how much damage they are dealing. That's actually crazy. And those units, they are even using the whole ability, which means they have 50% increased damage and armor. And they are hitting like a truck, by the way. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, we have a fight in this. In the meantime here. The crossbowmen, they are getting taken down because the crossbowmen were actually focusing down those pikemen. Unlike those Lorian archers, that's the real... That's the right way to focus. You want to kill the archers first. And then you can just take the pikemen out anyway. They are not a big threat. Especially when you have pikemen in the front to protect them. Which was the case. So a big win here for the Alvin player Tada. At the same time, um, Isengard player was able to secure this creep for himself. Alvin player was able to secure the creep at the bottom left side. And with that being said, we don't have a single creep left on the map for of Eisen anymore. Beautiful. Powerpoint wise, uh, Creebane and Warchant are... Available. I mean, Warchan is on cooldown, but he was able to get the power points he needs for the cave bats. He's going for the, you know, the first tower, lookout tower here in the middle of the map. Has a lot of furnaces just to increase his command points. 550 command points available for the Isengard player Talos. And on the other side, Tada, the Elven player has 7 power points collected in total after rallying Cole. He didn't go for the heal or for the foresight. So I'm assuming he's gonna go for the Enshrouding Mist. Which is pretty much the same thing like what Cave Bats does, uh, negating the enemy leadership and also debuffing them on top of that. Um, and he's only two power points away from that, and also 650 command points. He has a decent amount of resources, can go for the Haldir potentially. We have also Lords on the field for the Isengard player Talos. And before, you know, like mentioned before, Lords is definitely the most cost efficient hero in the game. Beautiful, I mean, the problem is here for the Isengard player, he's being kinda in a turtle situation. Luckily, he has two level 2 furnaces, that's gonna help him out a bit. Uh, later on, he can just go for the lumber mills and then, you know, get some extra resources here and there, which is gonna be necessary. Again, Isengard has a great amount of resource income, since you have so many ways to boost your eco. But, we need to also mention that Isengard units are really expensive as well, I mean... We are talking about the crossbow man, I mean Urukai. They cost 400 each. And if you have two Uruk pets up on the field, you wanna make pikemen, they are also, they cost also 400, unlike the pikemen from the Alvin faction. But we need to also mention that uh, pikemen, Uruk pikemen are stronger than those Mifflond sentry units from the Alvin faction. Right, uh, we have some peasants on the field as well. This, this Malon tree will be taken down by those Warc Riders. Two power points collected after Warchan and Creebane. 525 command points available now for the Isengard player Talos. And we have 775 command points as Haldir is joining the fight. 10.5 power points collected for the Alvin player Tada on the left side. Pretty damn good if you ask me. Um, now it's gonna be important to, you know, keep this Haldir alive and to get some levels on him. And I think... The biggest power spike with Haldir you will be hitting once he's level 8 with the Golden Arrow. That's like a small um, um, small version of a Cloud Break, stunning all the enemy units around. Which actually means that you will have enough time to burst them down with your Lorian Arches now and your Mirkwood Arches later on. Um, I gotta admit something, I didn't see those Revendal Lancers anymore on the field, so I'm assuming he lost them. I see only those uh, Linden Horse Archers. The problem with them is, just like with all Archer units in the game, 
they are not gonna deal any damage to the structures. So for now, only those kind of units like peasants and those pikemen from Mifflon are able to take down those furnaces. And that means again that this tower in the middle of the map is in a really safe situation and spot. In the worst case scenario, you can just put those crossbowmen inside and even upgrade the tower with the fight arrow upgrade. And Elven player Tada will be struggling a lot to take it down. Beautiful. This Malo, uh, this um, lumber mill is being the target. It's quite uh, low. I mean, 1,500 health only with level one. So he might still be able to take it down because he's clumping quite nicely. But Salos will deny it from happening as he keeps his lumber mill alive. And he has only one lumber mill up on the field so far. Alvin Play is building up a tower. Um, Isengard can actually potentially go for it, but it's gonna be a risky thing anyway. He doesn't have any arches inside though, so he should be good to go for now. And now we have Glorfindel on the field as well, boys. Glorfindel, as you know, is one of the strongest 1v1 heroes in the game for sure. Especially when he hits level 3 with the Blade of Purity. That's gonna double his damage and double his armor. And I mean, when he's level 3, not even Lurts with the Cripple ability and the Carnage can damage him and duel him. That's not possible. Yes, Lurts is increasing his damage output by 200%. But only, you know, 25% in terms of armor. And that's not gonna be a match to Glorfindel's Blade of Purity. And yeah, he's quite tanky as well. But he needs to be careful. Before the level 3 power spike, you don't wanna, you know, underestimate the damage from Lourdes especially. Because he's really close to level 4. Level 4 will be unlocking, as you know, his cripple ability. But I don't know about that. He has Carnage though. But do you wanna fight that, really? We have some Revendal Lancers coming now on the field. The tower is putting in some nice work and he indeed is purchasing the fighter upgrade and that's what I'm talking about. Look how fast those units are getting taken down. And since uh, Glorfindel is only level 1, he needs to be super careful because Lords in the back is really, really close to hit level 4. And that means he will be crippling down your Glorfindel and you will not, you will not be able to move any soon. And now he's just donating more power points as he's sacrificing those Revendal Lancers. And that's gonna give Isengard the power points he needs. He has now 10 power points that's gonna turn into the Devastation which will be used immediately to increase his resources. We have now the Siege Works up on the field. I'm expecting to see some of those Ballistas. Um, I feel like, you know, Saruman could be a great choice here. He has now this Inundated is Control that's gonna give him the chance to get those Black Orc Warriors on the field. And Black Orcs um, are like a cheaper alternative to the Urukai. They cost only 250 each. And they are not very much weaker than Urukai. So if you are struggling resource wise, you can always, you know, make some more Black Orcs instead of those Urukai. 675 command points now for the Isengard player. I see now multiple. Mal uh, no, wait a second. Only two. It looks like he lost this one over there. He has still two uh, Lumber Mills on the field though, so that means he's gonna get some more and more money over time. And in the worst case, he can save the power points he needs for the Field of Fires. That's gonna increase his resource income from those Lumber Mills by 70 more percent. That's incredible. And if this is not gonna be enough, you can still go for the Industry and buff one of your furnaces and get more resources. So, like again, at the beginning of the video, Isengard in the lead game should really not struggle when it comes to get resources, guys. Also not with 775 uh, command points and the fact that he has now some of those furnaces being level 3. And some are really close. Beautiful. So, Tada, the Elven player on the left side, has 750 command points available, has Tom Bombadil special summon ready for the next fight. And we know this old man, he's gonna dance around Knock everyone down from the enemy player, even Lurtz. And then, if he gets the chance, he's gonna go for the beautiful Sonic Song, which is something like a Wizard Blast. And that's gonna wipe out the entire army, if placed correctly from the Isengard player Talos. So Talos has to be careful. 825 command points for Tada. He has almost 3000 resources collected. And the fact that he's not going for the end mood means um, money is not gonna be useful because he's gonna struggle to take down only this tower here without the ends. Now he needs to defend himself against the upcoming Ballista attack. 
We have some mid boots on the field. He's making a statue to buff this damage. But then again, Creebane is gonna negate the leadership here. It's gonna be useless, this uh, statue on the back. But the problem is, and that's really important, guys, you don't wanna use Creebane before your units are in the range from the enemy archers. Because if you use it before uh, those mid boots here in the back and those Lorian archers in the front, they're gonna take your bats down in a second and a half. That means if no more bats, no more negation, no more debuff. Tom Bomba deal in the back of the army. Isengard has to be careful. And boom! Yeah! What a beautiful, beautiful Sonic Song ability. But Glorfindel is being in trouble. Is heal ability available? Yes, it is. But he's still only level 2 and Lurt is quite healthy. His carnage ability is still up. And this Bomba deal should be trying to knock him down. And it looks like not even close, baby. And Glorfindel, ladies and gentlemen, was able to survive. What a poke champ. Can I get a poke champ in the comment section below? And by the way, guys, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I would really, really appreciate it. And if this is your very first time on my channel and you are looking for more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing as well. There was a huge win, by the way, for the Elven player, and here's also now Legolas on the field, who's almost level 3. Um, but again, you can see that he is struggling a lot in order to take down this lookout tower. There is only one tower, and yeah, there are some crossbowmen inside, but you need to definitely, definitely get some ends on the field to take down the fortress and everything around easier. This way you are spending so much time, I mean, it's, let, let's not call it spending, let's call it wasting time. And during all this time, you are also donating more and more power points for the Isengard player. And I feel like this army is not going to be successfully able to take down those structures efficiently and fast enough. So Isengard will have the time he needs to rebuild more and more uh, army. I mean, to, re to replace them, you know, he's going to probably revive Lords now. And look at the money from Elven Fact player, by the way, guys. That's crazy. He has almost 5,000 resources collected. Is that a ring hero we don't know about? Was he able to capture the ring and he's trying to save for uh, Galadriel or something? I don't know. What is this money being saved for? It doesn't make any sense. He can go for a giant eagle though. Or does he have the eagle on the field already? I mean, eagle could be a really useful thing here to take down those towers. Even though, I mean, they have now the fire upgrade purchase. So I think they're also going to damage the eagle quite a bit. And yeah, I think the answer is ants. Get ants on the field, man. Get ants on the field. It looks like he's gonna go for the barracks now. For the second barracks. He's already one level two. Keeps making more and more Mirk Woods. Uh, doesn't go for the upgrades. Doesn't go for the ants. And doesn't go for the heroes either. So I don't know what he's saving for. I can't really tell. An Isengard player is not cash floating that much. Isengard has now his lords back on the field. Almost level five. And yeah, um, really important to mention that Elven player went for the Tom Bombadil, which was definitely the right call during this fight. Tom Bombadil was one of the main factors why Elven player was able to dominate the fight. But he needs to now potentially go for the for the mist because this Lords is all about to hit level uh, all about to hit level five. That's gonna unlock his leadership. Big Warchan play is incoming. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. In the meantime, Elven player's um, army is at the bottom side of the map. Glorfindel is level 4, Legolas is level 4 as well, but he needs to retreat. He needs to go back to his own side of the map, because the Ballista and this many pikemen are gonna take down those structures within seconds. I mean, he has a Mirkwood archer in the back, and we know those Mirkwoods, holy moly, they are hitting like a truck. We know that. And you shouldn't never be underestimating the damage output from those Mirkwoods. But on the bright side, however, you can kill them quite quite fast. The cave pads are being used to negate the leadership here from the stage on the back and to debuff the enemy units. But again, look at this. This uh, Linden Horse Archers and this one Mirkwood Battalion in the back, they were able to take down the cave pads quite, quite fast. Legolas is being crippled down. Wildman of the Land Special Summon. Lords and... Oh, Lords was taken down by Legolas, but Legolas dies. The heal lag is being... You know, Ta uh, Talos is being on host. So I think it was a mistake from um, from Tada to not calculate the delay, which always can happen in this game. And you need to heal a bit earlier. Potentially would be able even to save his Legolas, but Legolas has been taken down. On the bright side, he was able to take down the Lords, and he will still be able to win the fight. But the problem is, he lost now a couple of his structures, unlike the Isengard player, who has all the time he needs. 
There are some units not doing much. They will be able now to take down this um, Lumber Mill at the bottom right side of the map. Nice, beautiful trample here, but the problem is if he has many Mirkwoods, and if you, even if you trample them down, you can't get away from them. They're gonna, they're gonna take you down. You know, that's... Don't be... Uh, don't underestimate the damage output, guys, from those mid uh, I mean, he's doing the right thing. He has now Saruman on the field. Boom! Oh, yeah, what a beautiful Vizaplas here. He's almost level 2 already. Level 2 is gonna give him the chance to get this long-range poke fireball. You can always use it on those Mirkwoods, deal a decent amount of damage, get more and more experience, potentially get level 6 with the Thunderbolt. You can still do some great work. He's towering up now, protecting this pathway. 21 power points collected for the Elven player Tada on the left side, 660 command points only. And I don't know what, why he's not expanding for. Now he needs to replace his Legolas. I mean, on the bright side, Glorfindel is level 5, Haldir is level 5, leadership is there, and cave beds are on cooldown. Tom Bombadil is loading, and it looks like he doesn't want to go for the Enshrouding Mist, which might be the necessary thing here, because Lourdes is level 5 now, and that means Isengard will have the leadership as well. But I think even with the leadership on the Isengard side, those Mirkwoods are not gonna be uh, in a in a really terrible situation. And one reason is, you know, if the fight is equal, it's gonna be in favor of the Elven player, because these Mirkwoods are the elite archers, and crossbowmen are not gonna match them. Oh, I take it back. He has now upgrades purchased here. I see heavy armor being purchased on those pikemen. And potentially even some of those crossbowmen might get the fire arrow upgrade on themselves. Which is gonna increase the damage output significantly, as we know. But Alvin player has almost 23 power points collected. And uh, Isengard player Talos has almost 15. And the 15, if I'm not mistaken, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. He can go for the Watcher. And this army here from the Alvin player is so vulnerable. When it comes to take the Watcher on his face. And that might be the case. Um, and kind of questionable also that the Elven player is not expanding. He's actually never being able to hit more than 760 command points at any point of the game. Even when he had 5000 plus resources collected. He's now going for the upgrades. And once he has the Silvertone, uh, Silvertone arrows purchased on his mid roots, not even the heroes can actually step up anymore. And that's gonna be really difficult for the Isengard player. And I think the way to go here is spam multiple Ballistas. Uh, the Saruman was kind of delayed from Talos. Maybe he should have gone for the for the Saruman a bit earlier. So you would have an easier time to level him up. I mean, if he gets somehow in the range of those Mirkwoods and gets a beautiful Visa Blast off, he can do still some great work. And now Elven player has to be careful. Tom Bombadillo's special summon. Haldir is running for his life. We need to keep an eye on this Tom Bombadil and on this... Oh, what a beautiful massive fireball from the Saruman! Holy moly, guys! Did you guys see that? He was able to kill so much! Oh, but he's gonna die for that! Tom Bombadil is knocking him down. Will this be enough to take him down, though? Saruman is still alive and Tom Bombadil is gonna be gone soon. Another one here. I mean, these wizards of Middle-earth, they are popping off like crazy. There is no running away. And the cripple was a bit too late. And you need to now, you know, wait kind of until the blade of purity is going to be on cooldown, which is going to be soon. Then Lourdes can put on the swords and with the carnage, you can e easily take him down. Heal is available though. Uh, and we have uh, Mirkwoods, I mean, not Mirkwoods, heal. Oh, he, was, he had heal, av heal ability available. Maybe he didn't want to waste it because he was expecting him to die anyway. But eagles are going to be ready now. On the other side, we will have industry being used on uh, this level 3 furnace in the back. And that's what I'm talking about. Industry, devastation, um, Lourdes. I didn't see Lourdes' level. He's level 6 now, only 2 levels away from the pillage. Now he needs to make sure to revive the Saruman. Because let's be honest, the only reason why he was able to win the fight in the first place was because of that crazy wizard blast from the old mighty wizard of the Isengard faction. And his name is Saruman. And yeah, he was evil in the, in the movies, but we take it. I mean, that was he, he did everything right in this game so far. And that's the perfect example how you should indeed play against Elven Faction. Because Elves, they are glass cannons. They, are, they, don't, they do have an incredible amount of damage output, but they can't take any damage in return. So they're gonna die in a second and a half by themselves. And you can use that fact for your own advantage. And we have seen what could happen if... Saruman ever manages 
to get in a close range and get a beautiful Wizard Blast off. That can literally change the outcome of the game. Indeed, it did. It did, boys. He was level almost 2 and from this one Wizard Blast, he got level 4 and a half. That is crazy. And that's one of the advantages of those crossbow men as well. Uh, crossbow men, I mean, um, because unlike the Elven Archers, if, the, if they purchase the upgrade for the Fire Arrow upgrade, I mean, they will also be dealing significant amount of damage to the structures. Eagle Special Summon was used. My bad, guys, I didn't pay attention. They are actually being used just mainly for the map control. I mean, there is no way you can, you know, go anywhere close to the Fortress. He has some crossbow men around. And also this um, furnace is at level 3. All of them are going to be able to shoot those eagles down. And they're going to die in a second and a half. And yeah, that's the problem. I can't tell you the reason why Tada refuses to make any ends. And without the ends, it's going to be nearly impossible. I think in a situation like this, he is trying to play for the late game. For the, for the flat ability, for example, from the spellbook. Um, just to deal decent amount of damage to those structures around and then, you know, use Glorfindel and maybe the Eagles combination to take down the fortress. But it's not necessary at all. You could have went for the for the ants like 10 minutes ago. And uh, trying to push without the ants, it's kind of questionable. It's not gonna work out. And you're gonna only, you're gonna struggle already to take down one of those furnaces as fast as you should actually um, to you know, make your pressure valuable, if this makes sense. You have now some more Mirkwoods joining, and now they are getting, all, he's also getting the Nolda Warriors. Those are those are the elite units from the Alvin faction, from the Barracks level 3. Paldir is level 6. We need to be careful once he's level 8. I mean, Isengard player has to be careful for that. Uh, Glorfindel is level almost 7. Once he's level 10, Starlight is also a game-changing ability. And we have seen already... So many uh, heroes, what happens if they reach the power spike of being level 6, 8 or 10 in the tournament games we have hosted so far. I mean, we have seen how powerful a Glorfindel can be once he's level 10, how powerful a Haldir can be once he's level 8 with the Golden Arrow. And if you are the Isengard player, you should try to not feed them the experience they are looking for. Because then... They're gonna be a one-man army, and it's gonna be almost impossible to face against them anymore. And we have Sharko now on the field. Oh, he was on the field probably a longer time, I didn't see him. 26 power points collected by the Alvin player boys. Um, Sharko gives leadership to those units around. He will be able to take down one of those Malon trees, that's really the key to go. You wanna punish him for not having any defensive units around. And... You actually don't need your war riders for defensive purposes again. Only this peasants here and, um, you know, uh, say it. Glorfindel can actually deal some damage to those structures. So indeed, you can just, you know, try to not fight them at all. In the worst case, you're going to give up those three furnaces. But who cares at this point? Isengard has a decent amount of money and Flat is ready. So, now the question is going to be when and where to use it. Uh, the problem is, there is no eagle follow-up. Eagles were used before, and I guess, even if you use Flats now, and try to take down, you know, the, the Uruk pits, or, you know, get it super low, in, in, you know, indeed, and try to kill all the expansions around the fortress, even if you do it now, I don't think that Glorfindel alone will be enough for the follow-up to take down the fortress. I don't know if this is gonna be enough. And he's gonna use it on the army anyway, a beautiful washing the evil out of the Middle Earth. Holy moly. But, Lords and Saruman are still alive. And, I mean, it looks like he doesn't want to go for the play, which makes a lot of sense. We have now Haldir shooting him down, Legolas shooting him down, he's level 5. And if you get really close, Glorfindel is gonna take you down in a second as well. So, you know... Also, a um, really smart move from Isengard, he keeps making more units, and the flood did not much, you know, maybe delayed a bit. Beautiful fireball here from Saruman, he's almost level 5 now. It looks like you wanna take the fight. You wanna take the fight? We're gonna, we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep an eye. Okay, that was, that was not the most beautiful, uh, uh, you know, wizard blast. On the, bright, on the other side, the Sonic song from uh, Tom Bombadil was actually quite significant. Glorfindel has been crippled down from Lourdes. 
but he's still been, being able to attack down and take down those um, Wildman of Dunland from the spell, special summon from the spellbook of Isengard. You can't damage him. Look at this. You can't. I don't know why he's not fighting back. He should be in range. Look at the damage he's able to deal. It looks like the range from Lourdes is a bit bigger, you know? If this make No, it was not actually. Lourdes has to run for his life. And he could have finished him maybe, but it looks like he doesn't want to risk the biscuit. Lourdes has been taken down. Glorfindel has been taken down as well. Is Legolas gonna go down? Sharku is still on the field. Legolas is running for his life. Fireball is gonna be available pretty soon. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure and certain that it's not gonna burst him down. He's almost full health. More follow-up is coming in the meantime. An Isengard player, guys, and ladies and gentlemen, has now 26 and a half power points collected. Yes, you know, a decent amount of resource income. Yes, level 3 lumber mills here, level two, level 3 furnaces. Industry has been used once again. He's gonna go for the Watcher Special Summon. And Devastation is gonna is also ready. So, you know, like I said, you have so many ways now to boost the resource income you need in the late game. And you need that, because he now keeps making Urukai, Crossbowmen and Pikemen. He now also purchases the upgrades on them to make them even stronger. Makes more work riders, makes, you know, revives his heroes, he loses. Um, beautiful. Let's see. Legolas was able to survive and so was Haldir. Haldir is level 7 and that's really dangerous for beautiful uh, Ox Strike ability here from Legolas, who's also almost level 7. That's gonna unlock the uh, arrow wind. That's the power spike he's looking for. But we need to keep an eye on this Saruman. He's looking to... Oh boy! Yeah! Knock them down on the water. And... <laughs> Haldir and Legolas are getting knocked back. Knocked down. But it looks like he won't be able to take them down. And I guess... You know, you could have used the Watcher's special summon a bit more... Wisely. You need to be a bit more patient. Using it exclusively on the heroes. You are not afterwards able to take down. Doesn't make too much sense to me. And in this case, we need to call this Watcher a waste, unfortunately, for Talos. But he was able to push back. Um, the heroes are gonna join again, and they are gonna be really annoying to deal with. And all the warriors are actually, you know, kind of surrounded. Mirkwoods are here, Legolas is level 7 now, that means Arrowwind is available. Uh, Saruman is being in a safe spot, that means there is no way we should be able to take him down. And those Linden Horse Archers, you know, you do, most of the time you don't see them. I guess he's using them for defensive purposes. Beautiful Fireball here once again from Saruman, who's almost level 6. And that's gonna unlock his Thunderbolt. So we have reached a stage of the game in which anything can happen. And it's any soon, you know what I'm saying? Like, one beautiful Bizarre Blast can literally change the outcome of the fight. And, and you know, in late game, in this current situation, it can even change the outcome of the game. Because Isengard... It's also getting really close for the 25 power points. And the flat was kinda useless. It's still on cooldown and the 25 power points from the spellbook, they have a huge cooldown. And after seeing your opponent has it, you need to use the cooldown. And the first time we see Ents, Ent mode is indeed, indeed building up. Now, the Alvin player Tada finally realizes I can't win this game without having Ents on the field. And that's the truth, that's the truth, but, you know, it might be too late for that. Talos was able to stall, stall long, uh, long enough to actually have now the chance to strike back and to go for this one big push that can literally end the game. But, you don't want to also give too much time for the Alvin players. Indeed, again, 20 plus power points collected. And all the warriors, they need to put on the swords <laughs> to take down this tower. And that feels bad, man. That feels bad, man. Not realizing that you need to spend ages and multiple minutes. And you need to sacrifice so many units to take down a, to take down a single tower. Because you refuse to make ends. Okay. Isengard attacking from the bottom left side. But Glorfindel, we know his splash damage. We know you don't want to be grouped against this guy. And we also know that he's almost level 8. Isengard play on the other side is 24 power points collected now. Glorfindel is the one-man army doing his thing. At the same time, we have some units here, but we don't need to pay attention because there is no way. Oh, I was wondering a second what was happening there. It looks like he was just, you know, kind of sacrificing his Nolder warriors for no reason. And losing those elite warriors, like Nolder warriors from any faction, gives your opponent so many power points. And indeed, 
Isengard has now 27 power points collected and Lucas resources are rising, Warg Riders are coming with upgrades, heavy armor and forge fleets purchased. Waldman of Dunland is gonna be ready pretty soon, I don't know what he's waiting for, do it! Just do it. He's gonna go for the Dragon Strike, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how much damage it's gonna be able to deal. And if he can take down the barracks here, maybe the barracks, even the back level 3 barracks, I don't know if it's gonna be enough to one-shot. We're gonna figure out pretty soon. Wind Rider is available for Glorfindel as well. He's only one and a half levels away from getting the Starlight unlocked. Saruman on the other side is level 6 now. And we are just keeping an eye on this uh, Dragon Strike. I'm assuming he's looking for a chance and an opportunity to use it right here. And that's gonna be the case. The Dragon is coming, flying by and one-shotting the level 3. One-shotting almost... Uh, oh, okay. I mean, he was just using it. I guess he wanted to take down the Forge as well. But I would say it's kind of not worth it <laughs> to take down only one structure with that. I think you could have used it maybe like... I don't know, I don't know, I'm not a pro in this game, maybe it's worth it because it's a level 3 uh, barracks at, you know, at the end of the day, that's gonna deny his Nolder Warriors, that's gonna deny or at least delay his Mirkwood Archers, and indeed Alvin player has actually still decent amount of resource income uh, and resources on the bank, um, but he does, I didn't see him anytime hitting 1000 command points in this game so far, unlike Isengard. Isengard has almost, uh, had almost full command points. Alvin player has now 35 power points collected. Uh, 36 almost, guys. He has the fortress up on the field still. I don't know what, you know, why he's not using the power points. Doesn't make any sense to me. And all the warriors are here. Glorfindel was forced to retreat. Legolas is level almost 8. And so is Haldir. And we know Haldir's golden arrow is gonna be very useful. Eagles are being special summoned to take down Saruman. They are not dealing too much damage to the heroes but since there is no backup i guess they will still be able to take him down and no fireball is available and saruman unfortunately here uh, will be taken down and Hylir hits level 8 after that beautiful and so is legolas and legolas dps is gonna be crazy and all the heroes i'm yeah all the heroes are level 8 now from the elven player tada lords is almost level 7 um, you can see the value of the heroes without the spells they need in the late game um, is actually getting decreased because, you know, once the enemy units are upgraded with heavy armor and forged blades. Um, in a 1v1 situation even, I would say that with the carnage you can still burst them down. But yeah, the game is turning again in the favor of the Arban player. Indeed, I mean, he has 44 command um, power points collected, guys. Almost 40,000 resources. Can even go for the second fortress. Uh, he made he made the end mood but didn't make a single end just yet. <laughs> it looks like it's a challenge. Trying to win without the ends maybe. I don't know what's the challenge all about. Um, and yeah. I would say we have seen some mistakes. The dragon strike was one of them. Here from the Isengard player Talos. And also the, the Saruman kind of you know. Kind of too late. The beautiful, you know, the, the first summon or the first use of Saruman around this area before with the beautiful wizard blast was actually the only, the first and only thing we have seen from Saruman. Um, other than that, he was playing super passively. In late game, you need to take the risk. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, at least, especially when you have already some money or, you know, decent amount of resource income, it doesn't gonna be very bad to lose the heroes, but to actually win the fight because of that. You know what, if this makes sense, guys. You lose your hero, you sacrifice your hero, but... Ooh, okay, okay, I see you, I see you. He was using the Thunder um, Lightning Strike here from the Fortress, and uh, that's gonna actually force him back, but unfortunately for the Isengard player, there are some pikemen taking down uh, the only Lumber Mill which was left. And indeed, he has now only 400 command points available. Not the resource income he's looking for. Not the power points he's looking for. Field of Fires without Lumber Mill is not, is not gonna do anything for you. It's gonna give you uh, more 70% increase, you know, resources from the Lumber Mills. <laughs> when you don't have any Lumber Mills, it's not gonna help you. Uh, Lourdes is almost level 8. Um, Glorfindel has been taken down. The Watcher is on cooldown still. And we have 51 power points collected from Tata. 
That's crazy. And he's not using them. He doesn't need them, it looks like it. Um, he can go for the Sun Flare here. I mean, he has the power points to do whatever, right? He can go for the Sun Flare. And um, take down at least all the all the expansions around the fortress to make it much easier. Um, the problem is, I still do think that it's not going to be enough. He's going to go for the end special summon. Okay, that's going to change everything. Sun Flare is ready and ends are ready. This combination might be enough to take down the fortress. We're going to see soon. Uh, he's going to use the Sun Flare on the enemy units. Builder has been burned down. <laughs> Uh, now he can use the ends maybe and start sieging the fortress finally. Uh, but it looks like Isengard player Talos is gonna give it up. And the victory in this game, good against evil, goes to the Elven player. Tada! On the map, Fort Surface. And what a beautiful and strange game at the same time. It was back and forth all the time, and you couldn't tell it to, uh, until the end. I was kind of disappointed from the Elven player Tada. You know, at some point he had like 5,000 plus resources collected and didn't go for the ants. At some point he had like 51 power points collected, didn't go for the ants and for the sun flare. And we have again seen what happens if you get your heroes high levels and even without trying to siege the enemy base, how much power points you can actually gain from killing enemy units all the time. And yeah, what do you guys think about this matchup? What do you find what do you guys think what Isengard player did wrong? What actually cost them the game? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, if you want to support me, all I'm asking for is a like. That's gonna help me out. And because of the YouTube algorithm, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you very soon again with the upcoming video. It's gonna be again a 1v1. Uh, I have already the replay for it. Take care of yourself. Have a great and fantastic week. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.